Today on BCIT Magazine, we speak to picketers of the walkout between BCAA and their employees. With the federal election a month away, the Fair Elections Act may decrease turnout. A local charity barbecue turns ugly after protests break out over animal rights. Hello and welcome to BCIT Magazine. I'm Chris Brutlinger Grant. And I'm Olivia Smith. Tuesday marked the 100th day of the lockout between BCAA and their employees. My co-anchor, Chris Brettlinger Grant, met with some of the picketers in Burnaby. Carrie Michaels would be spending her nights working as a roadside assistant supervisor. But now, her and many other employees are out here, most with families to care for at home. I have two children and I have um, a husband and he does work, but um, yeah, we are making ends meet, but uh, I'm not being able to pay off any of my bills. But BCAA still needs to run their business and a team of managers has taken over trying to do the jobs of 70 people themselves. There's longer wait times on the phones, there's longer wait times on the road for emergency road service, um, also emergency after hours insurance claims. They have uh, often opted to not answer those calls. One of the things that BCAA did actually the day before the lockup began on June the 7th was that they took off all of the neon letters in the building behind me so that the public could perhaps not identify that their building was the one associated with all the picketers out front. They actually completely took it down so the public wouldn't recognize it as one of their facilities. That to me tells what the intention was. It's not something they shared with us. It's certainly not something they shared with their dedicated employees, but it was certainly something that I thought was incorrigible. All calls put into BCAA over three days went straight to voicemail and every message was not returned. Sorry, we are unable to take your call at this time as all agents are currently helping other customers. With both sides dug in for 100 days and with no easy end in sight, roadside services may still be a ways away for BCAA's customers. Chris Bruntlinger Grant, Burnaby for BCIT Magazine. One Coquitlam resident is urging the public to adopt the silver alert system after the disappearance of his father two years ago. Our reporter Amrit Gill has the story. I think our family is, has accepted that he's no longer with us. It's just so much time has passed. I still do catch myself scanning the streets, looking for maybe my father. Sam No continues to search for his father who mysteriously disappeared two years ago and has not been seen since. 64-year-old Shin Noh is someone who has been known to have suffered from Alzheimer's. On September 18 of 2013, he left his home and hasn't been heard from since. Yeah, so this area, we are standing at uh, the Mennonite sighting at Princeton and Kingston. This is the area that he was seen by a couple construction workers, and this is a confirmed sighting. Extensive search efforts led by Michael Coyle of Coquitlam Search and Rescue were carried through and the silver alert yeah. system was implemented. The silver alert would have helped uh, by notifying the public very quickly, especially the people who live in his neighborhood. When someone who is particularly vulnerable goes missing, the public is alerted through various means of communication, from social media to signs on the highway. You can sign up for alerts through social media by visiting www.bcsilveralert.ca. And so we do need to remind people that, you know, remind the government that some sort of program needs to be available for families once their, fa their uh, family member goes missing. I'm Rick Gill in Coquitlam for BCIT Magazine. We are now joined by reporter Amrit Gill. So Amrit, what exactly is a silver alert? 
Hi, Chris. Well, a snowball alert is an alert that goes off when a very vulnerable member of the community goes missing. Now, that could be someone with Alzheimer's or a different, different cognitive disorder. Unlike the Amber Alert, when a silver alert search happens, it focuses on a very specific region of land. What stance do local leaders have on it? Well, the NDP Selena Robinson, she did propose a private member's bill, but it was rejected by government. Some critics say that they did not have enough research to support that decision. Back to you. Over the weekend, Langley held the 10th annual Barbecue Off the Bypass. This year, the event benefited a local organization set up to help felines in need. My co-anchor, Chris Brettlinger Grant, has the story. Volunteers from Tiny Kittens acted as the event's official greeters, and there were donation boxes outside of both entrances. Among the barbecues, and the live music, and Langley athletes and mascots was one booth, complete with a live stream showing rescued cats playing and sleeping together. Shelley Roche is the founder of Tiny Kittens. Well, it's amazing that we are their charitable partner because um, we're, they're donating tons of money, people are donating tons of money when they walk in the door and like Otter Co-ops doing mini donuts by donation and um, all the money that comes in goes directly toward the animals that we rescue. Uh, we're 100% volunteer run so um, you know the money goes right to the cats to help them so really grateful for, for the support of Barbecue on the Bypass, off the Bypass. The charity started up three years ago in relative obscurity. Now, politicians are getting behind it, like Langley Township Mayor Jack Froze. This year is the first year that Tiny Kittens has become their charity, and Tiny Kittens is a fantastic organization. They work a lot with the Langley Animal Protection Society, which looks after uh, our uh, animal uh, control and animal protection in Langley. This is the first time in its 10-year history that the barbecue off the bypass has teamed up with the charity responsible for looking after animals. And Tiny Kittens is certainly happy to have been a part of the festivities here today. There's been a big lineup of people at the east entrance just waiting to get in, passing these big water coolers full of donations, and we've already seen a couple of $100 bills, more 50s, and just 20 after 20 keep rolling in. We'll see if with all these donations the charity gets here today, they can continue their mission here in Langley and even expand maybe past 25 cats. Chris Brettlinger Grant and Langley, BC, BCIT Magazine. Barbecue off the bypass was a day filled with family fun, but as reporter Emily Murray found, it also attracted controversy when some unexpected guests arrived. With these animals! Members of animal rights group Direct Action Everywhere came to protest the barbecue off the bypass event over this past weekend. You are eating animals. The reality is that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a dog or a pig, you can all experience pain and sadness and joy and happiness. Some of the barbecue supporters had their own response to the activist message. founder and organizer of the cook-off said she was surprised with the protesters choice to rally against this event. When I founded Barbecue Off the Bypass 10 years ago, one of my objectives was to educate people on local food. And everybody who's here today selling and talking about food, they produce and raise the most sustainable food in the country. They take such good care of their animals, that's what they do. In its 10-year reign, Barbecue Off the Bypass says that they have never encountered issues with protesters before. Instead, the environment is much like this, calm and family-friendly. Despite the drama, Quali says she's more than happy with the day overall. Come on, look at all the people. How fun is this? Everybody's got barbecue sauce on their face. All the little kids have their faces painted. Everybody's just having a great time. Food brings people together. That's why we did this. Emily Murray in Langley for BCIT Magazine. BCIT Student Association have teamed up with writing supplies company Stradler to give students a chance to win prizes while they shop. With more than a week left in the contest, there are many more prizes to be won. That's the sound of a $900, a $900 bike that is. And the BCIT Student Association is giving it away for free along with water bottles, sweaters, and even a spa getaway for two. In order to win these prizes, students just purchase any Stadler product and then submit a ballot. 
we've chosen to work with Stadler. They have really high quality products. Um, you know, as a as a school that has people across all realms of programs, we have something for everyone here. So basic pens and pencils, notebooks, workbooks, everything, uh, any tools that people might need to get through their time at BCIT. BCIT students can participate by making purchases at various campus stores, such as Geared Up and The Stand. The contest runs through to September 30th. Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, university education comes at a high price. Find out how to budget throughout school. Lower Mainland students bargain hunt for back to school clothing. I chose BCIT because I know that all the programs are very hands-on. We have our own radio station, like it's, it's one of the best programs that I've ever heard of. I am starting a job on Monday, so confidence is high. Uh, honestly, I didn't think it was going to be this fun. A defining moment for me was when I finished my first internship and got lots of really great feedback from industry professionals. I would never have imagined I'd be walking into the floors of TSN and thinking, I'm not a student anymore, I'm here to work. I will be starting a job with an investigative news program in Toronto and I'm really excited to see that grow into what will become hopefully my dream job. BCIT broadcasts and online journalism, putting you to work. Elections are a month away, but the new Fair Elections Act has been criticized for deterring potential voters. Lena Tanahara finds out why. With the federal election one month away, the campaign between the three major parties is heating up. But one major issue that's happened historically for every single election is voter turnout. But the new Fair Elections Act has been criticized for discouraging voter turnout. The controversy was that the election, the Fair Elections Act was going to suppress turnout potentially at a time when we actually needed to increase it because it made it harder in essence for people to vote. There were two amendments included that were particularly controversial. Prohibition on the use of voter registration cards as ID and the elimination of vouching. Uh, and another is the elimination of Elections Canada's ability to encourage turnout. I mean, there's a number of other elements into the act, but in essence, those were the two that everyone paid attention to. But contrary to the speculation that the Fair Elections Act would deter people from voting, this student is optimistic about voter turnout. 2011 was pretty low. Um, of like the under 30, I think less than 40% came out who are eligible. So this year, I hope it's more, I'm thinking we might break 50. There's been a lot more push for young people to vote and go out there. But she might be on to something. Everyone we spoke to intended on voting. I think I plan on voting, yeah. I'm a long-term, uh, long-time NDP supporter. My family was NDP supporters, but I think I might vote for uh, the Liberals. Uh, I haven't done enough research yet, but I'm probably not going to vote Conservative, so I'm still thinking between the two. So no matter the election results, perhaps one of the most interesting numbers might be how many people show up to vote. Lena Tanahara in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Joining us now is Mario Canseco of Insights West, a market research and public polling firm, and he's here to talk to us about the upcoming federal election. Hi Mario, how are you? I'm great, thanks for having me. Good. Um, so what have you been seeing in terms of young voter interest in the polls so far? Well, we see that the younger voter tends to gravitate towards left of center parties or center left uh, parties, uh, not really too conservative. Uh, there's a higher rate of those who want to vote if they're going to college right now. So if you're urban and going to a, a college, you're more likely to say that you will cast a ballot in the next federal election. And I think one of the big questions that we've all been wondering is who's currently leading in the polls? Well, we have a, a very interesting scenario in BC because there are certain urban areas where the Liberal Party is doing very well, particularly in ridings such as Vancouver South and the North Shore. Uh, the Conservatives gaining a little bit of uh, momentum in the Okanagan, the North, and the NDP doing really well in Vancouver Island along with the Greens. So there are certain areas where you can win fairly simply and others where there are really three or four uh, horse races. And where do you see, can you predict the polls when we go into do debates 
um, big events, are they going to change dramatically? Are they going to fluctuate? Well, it's been interesting to look at the national numbers because there are certain aspects that haven't really changed that much. There's one or two points here. It's been very difficult over the past few weeks for any party to gain traction and get closer to 35 or 40 percent, which is what they need to form the next government. Um, usually what we see there is a little bit of a shift, especially from the undecided voters. Maybe somebody who voted for the conservatives before and isn't really quite happy this time around, will they come back into the fold or chose somebody different uh, who they can vote for. And how is BC compared to other provinces, do you think? Well, uh, one of the changes here is that we see the, uh, the uh, uh, Green Party doing very well, especially in some of the ridings in South Vancouver Island. Uh, this is something that we don't see anywhere else in the country. Um, thank you very much for coming and visiting us, and we look forward to seeing you more in the news lately. Thank you. Thank you. For student, some students, back-to-school shopping is an excuse to buy new clothes. But at this new Westminster thrift store, it isn't about brand new. Madison Arota brings us the story. There's a secret to saving money when it comes to back-to-school shopping, but it might not be a secret anymore. September is a pretty busy month. We're getting over the hump of summer. We're coming into back-to-school. A lot of people are looking for bargains on name-brand clothing. Saunders has owned this thrift store for over 20 years, but she says it's only become recent that students are back to school shopping secondhand style. I would say more and more people are catching on and telling their friends, whereas before nobody would tell anybody because it was top secret if you bought it from a thrift store, and now they're sort of proud to say they're fined and how much they paid and how much they saved, and it's like a big deal to save money. For those on a student budget, thrift shopping is no secret. I work a couple days a week, but paying for my own tuition, I still have to be worrying about money. And so thrift shopping and other ways of saving money is really important. But there are bargains to find even if you're not shopping for clothing. Students are also looking to furnish their apartments. So we offer reasonable furniture and we can basically furnish a whole apartment for between three and four hundred. We can deliver it for a hundred dollars. Gardner says thrift shopping is a bright idea for any student looking to save some money. Yeah, I would encourage other students to thrift shop. I do because as a student it's important for me to save money, so I would encourage other students to do the same. Madison Rhoda in New Westminster for BCIT Magazine. With tuition prices continuously rising, students returning to university this month are being put to the test when it comes to budgeting. Tara Harvey set out to find out how two UBC students are managing to make it work. Jessica is moving into her first year at UBC, and while she does have assistance from her parents, she says the thought of running out of money by second year worries her. Before university, I never really had much experience with this much independence, independence with this much money. So uh, it's a challenge so far, although it hasn't been too bad, I haven't been here too long. But I'm really uh, going to start trying to pay attention to what I'm spending and what I'm spending it on and how much I have left to spend, really. This second year student says along with the high price of tuition, he has to budget for added costs. There's a couple classes where I actually have to buy online codes just to do homework, so I'm basically paying to get better grades in some of my classes. You have to buy the online textbook, which is packaged with the homework, so you have to buy the textbook in a couple classes, unless you want a 10% decrease in your mark. Stats Can recently released a report showing that tuition in Canadian schools has jumped up 3.2% this year, with the average Canadian student now paying more than $6,000 per year in tuition. Ontario students are paying the most at over $7,000, while BC students are paying just over $5,000 per year on average. This financial advisor says there are a few key things every student should keep in mind to avoid student debt. Something to track your budget is a ideal thing to utilize, especially as a student. You're sort of strapped for cash, at least I was as a student, and I know most students are, that uh, you want to know where all of your money is going. And if you can create a picture of that, see it on a regular basis, you'll be much more in tune with your finances, which is key. For now, Ryan will search for a part-time job to ensure he can financially roll through the school year smoothly. Tara Harvey in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Tara Harvey now joins us live to tell us more about student budgeting. Tara, what are some tools students can use to track their spending? 
Chris, there are a number of free apps you can download online that will connect directly to your financial accounts so you can see exactly where your money is going. A lot of them will let you set monthly and weekly goals as well, and then they'll alert you when you're getting, when you're getting too close to your budget so you can make sure you stay under and hopefully save some money. Coming up next on BCIT Magazine, a young woman is hosting a garage sale with all the proceeds going towards a night of fun and fashion. Two Vancouver men race from the UK to Mongolia for a good cause. The most rewarding thing for me has been the relationships I developed in the program, both with instructors and classmates. My sense of confidence has never, never been higher. I mean, this, this program has offered great opportunities to be in real world, real industry situations, and, and being in those moments and knowing I can contribute, I can do this. It's exciting to be in this industry and to meet lots of great people and to make amazing friends. BCIT broadcasts and online journalism, realizing your potential. Standby graphics, ready camera one. If you want to experience the fast-paced world of news, today on BCIT magazine, striking. Make magic on a movie set, frame, and action or bring your creative ideas to life. BCIT's hands-on training will get you started. BCIT Television and Video Production. Your possibilities start here. If you're a runner, this year's Terry Fox Run takes place here in Burnaby at Swan Guard Stadium at 10 a.m. this Sunday, September 20th. If walking's more your thing, you can always participate in the Scotiabank AIDS Walk for Life, taking place on September 20th at 11.30 at Sunset Beach in Vancouver. And if you're looking to help clean up our environment, you could go down to Richmond at Iona Beach to help with the kickoff event for the Great Canadian Shoreline Cleanup, taking place at 10 a.m. on Saturday, September 19th. A young woman is raising money to help run a fashion show for BC Children's Hospital patients. My co-anchor Olivia Smith brings us this heartwarming story. For the better part of his life, Caden's been a BC Children's Hospital patient. But today, he's preparing for an upcoming event that will benefit kids just like him. We wave. We he has ball. much in common with Carissa Dean. Dean was also a patient of BC Children's Hospital and is dedicated to giving back to the community who once cared for her. She's created an annual event with an extra special cast. We use patients of the hospital as the models, so they get to be treated like superstars for the day. But this year, Dean is getting a jump start on funding. She's hosting a garage sale to raise money towards startup costs for her annual fashion show. We usually need about $500 to $1,000 to put on the show, so we're hoping to meet that as our goal for this weekend. Caden has been a star in the show since 2011. His mom, Stevie, says she feels proud of the kids when they get to be the stars. It's just, you feel so proud because they feel so proud. They're walking down the ramp and they don't quite know what to expect at first. It's just, it's fun. All of a sudden, they start to lose their fear of walking out in front of people. They get so much confidence and they start smiling, they start being silly, they're dancing, their faces light up, and then you look out and you see their parents with like big tears in their eyes because they're so proud and happy. And it just, once you see that, then you're like, okay, I have to do this again. For her to come up with this idea to give back is incredible. And so we're there to support her 100%. Dean says she is excited for this year's show and hopes Caden will be all smiles once more. Olivia Smith in Maple Ridge for BCIT Magazine. <laughs> two Vancouver friends spent the last two months racing from the UK to Mongolia, all while raising $3,000 for charity. Tara Harvey has the story. After 18,000 kilometers, we're in Ashgabat, Turkmenistan, and I think there is a sandstorm. 21 countries and three deserts. Matt Standish and Derek Travis are adjusting back to their normal lives. They're survivors of the Mongol rally. 250 cars start in London, and then we all have to make it to Ulan Ud, Siberia, after traversing Mongolia. And 
I guess from last I heard about 150 made it. So about 100 cars along the way either didn't make it, got broken, people had to abandon them and leave. But you're completely unsupported. It's your choose your own adventure on the way to get to that finish line. The pair spent the past two months navigating their own way through the rally with two goals to cross the finish line and to raise money for the BC Cancer Foundation. Both of us have had family members that have survived cancer, so um, when, they, when the Mongo Rally asked you to choose a, an organization to raise money for, it was kind of a no-brainer for us. They blogged and filmed their way through the race, and as they look back at the photos now, they say a few moments stick out in their minds. We hit a deep puddle, and we ended up flooding the engine with water, and the engine was kaput. It, we filled it with water, broken. Upon coming back from this once in a lifetime experience, Travis offers this advice. You should go out and explore. It's not quite as scary. For now, Standish and Travis won't be driving into another adventure anytime soon, but say it's not out of the question. Tara Harvey in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. A local country singer from Maple Ridge won a CCMA award last weekend. Madeline Merlot received her hardware in the Rising Stars category. Merlot feels like it has all gone so fast and says she's never been so shocked in her entire life. BCIT's fourth annual Frosh Fest has officially been cancelled due to the weather. Eventbrite is issuing refunds. Unfortunately for minors, the replacement party will be held at Professor Muggs Pub. If you have any questions or comments regarding this program, please visit us online at bcit-broadcast.com or bcitbroadcastnews.ca. I'm Chris Brentlinger Grant. And I'm Olivia Smith, and that's today's BCIT Magazine. Thanks for watching. Here's exciting footage of rally car racing across the Middle East.